our ministry would come out of outflowing, powerful, outflowing experiences of your voice speaking over us over and over and over and over and over again that we're not alone. God, it'd be deeper than religion. It'd be deeper than rhetoric. It'd be deeper than ideas. It'd be deeper than intellect. God, that we'd know that we're not alone. Sons and daughters of the living God coming alive. This is my commandment that you love one another as I've loved you. Greater love has no man than this, than to lay down one's life for his friend. And you're my friends. No longer do I call you servants. He says this, I love this. You're my friends if you do what I command you. <laughs> I always love that about Jesus. Because <laughs> you can misinterpret him, you know what I mean? He lived in such a plain yet it was so simple to those that had ears to hear. But he made it even difficult for some. Purposely. He was the type of leader that said, oh, is there somebody else that's better than me? Well, I'd suggest go listening to him. <laughs> is there somebody else in town that's healing more, baptizing more? I'd suggest you go over there then. Does your money mean more to you than me? I'm sad to see you have to go, but see ya. I'd like you to be with me. Jesus, you, you don't start a religion and give us the Bible if you want to control people. <laughs> you don't start a religion and live like Jesus because Jesus did all the wrong things, guys. He really did all the right things, but he did all the wrong things for starting religion. Religion, you gotta control people. Religion, you gotta manipulate people. Religion, you gotta get more and more people every week, right? Religion, religion. Jesus gets to John 17 and he says, I don't pray for the world, I pray for those that my Father has given me. Whoa, 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 what do you mean? What do you mean, what do you mean? Jesus, the greatest revolutionary that ever lived, the greatest lover that ever lived, the one that split the veil for us. He says, I don't pray for the world. I pray for those the Father gave me. Because the world isn't my business now. The Father's my business. And I'll get to whatever the Father has for me to get to. Or those seeded among me that God has given to me that are going to blossom and bloom after I'm dead. You want to live like Jesus? Live your life like you're going to be dead in three years. Want to lead like Jesus? Live your life like you're going to be dead in three years. No preparation, no power struggle, no trying to figure out who's in the lead. Jesus just said, hey, if you want to be in the lead, then go lead. I'm calling those that will follow me. And I'm not even trying to get anybody. I'm not trying to manipulate. He was the type of person that would have told you a bunch of stuff and then would have said, hey, but I'm not here to convince you. I'm just telling you the truth. Golly, Jesus, you are so cool. <laughs> Jesus is so cool. Greater love has no one than this. Greater love has no one than this. Than to lay down one's life for his friends. And you are my friends. If you do it, I command you. And this is why. Because no longer do I call you servants. Okay? For a servant does not know what his master's doing. But I've called you friends. For all things that I heard from my Father, I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, I chose you. And appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain. And that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. So tonight, Jesus is saying to us, ah, last 
last night was like, I want you to walk in my love. I want you to learn to love me. I want you to learn to love. And love isn't easy, huh? Real love. Fake love is. Controlling love is. It's not really love. But control is easy. Business decisions are easy. Investment is easy. Because you only invest if you're going to get a return on your investment. But love is not easy. Because you don't always get the return value for value. Huh? Love, you just you just do it and then God says, thank you. But he promises us this, that if we live like that, our fruit would remain. That your fruit will remain. That, that every day that I live and you live, we don't have to fret if we're walking in his love and not in the spirit of control, manipulation, or coercion. But if I walk in the spirit of love, I know I'm guaranteed that my fruit remains because every word that's sent down from heaven does not go up until it succeeded in what he sent it to do. So God, I want to be doing what you called me to do. I don't want to be like Jacob and be manipulating and coercing and deceiving and lying in order to get a blessing that in my lying down and sleeping in my bed at night, you're already giving me. That you're dreaming for me. But not only that, every time I sing that, God gives me these songs and I don't always know what they all mean. But one night I'm singing that song and I get to that phrase, Jacob, will you dream for me the way that I have dreamed for you? But the line before it says, in my dreams, not what you do. And I heard the father say, Jason, will you dream for me the way that I dream for you? Or do I have to prove myself? Do I have to prove myself? Because I'm the God of all eternity. I created everything. I created the sky and the sea and the land and everything in it. Do I have to prove myself to you again? When you were a child, Jacob, you couldn't even walk. And I was there for you and I held you. But now that you're old... You think you could do it on your own. And so I'm waiting with my dream for you. I'm waiting. I'm, I'm just waiting. You ever known the father's heart like that? Like in the prodigal son story, we always concentrate on the prodigal, but rarely do we concentrate on the father. This father that's so hopeful... Everybody's telling him that his son is dead. Everybody's telling him that he's never coming home. Everybody's telling him that he's a fool. And he's continually, with faith in his heart, with a dream in his heart, he continually says over and over and over again, are you feeding the calf today that I'm preparing for my son when he returns so that we can eat together? What about that ring that I asked you to make for him? Is it ready yet? The hopeful expectation, anticipation on your life tonight is beyond your own ability to comprehend. That every morning when you wake up, God is already speaking. And you know what theology tries to tell us? You know what intellectualism tries to tell us? It tries to tell me that, especially in Western civilization, that God is no longer speaking. You know what that means? It means this. Listen to me. Because I've become the new God. And I'm going to tell you what he's saying. And Jesus came and he ruined all that, you guys. He came in and he said, he's already speaking and he's speaking to you. 400 years of silence? Pfft, no way, he's been talking the whole time. <laughs> and you, my friend, are his word. Because the kingdom's in you. He spoke you into existence. What more do you need to know that he's real? Boom, right there, right you. And the father keeps saying it. Jesus comes. He distresses all of the theologians because they thought they could blow.